Who knew? 2015 was the International Year of Soils. I didn't know that until I got involved with a campaign by the U.S. Department of Agriculture Natural Resource Conservation Service, which is the new name for the Soil Conservation Service that was created after the Dust Bowl conditions in uh, the middle of last century uh, when we started losing vast amounts of topsoil that couldn't be replaced and there was a crisis in farming in the, in the uh, nation. And so uh, for well, almost all of the 20th century and the first decade of this century, uh, this, their efforts have been about trying to stop erosion, trying to keep topsoil in place. But there have been a lot of really remarkable uh, um, new developments and trends in farming that have been uh, both uh, experimented with and supported by the USDA that they're trying to get the word out. And so I supported that effort through some public service announcements and this event and all this kind of stuff, just talking about soils. So I had the opportunity to learn a lot about soils, which is really cool. And in particular, uh, Farmer Carl, his name is Carl, but they called him Farmer Carl, told his story, which was so terrific that I just want to spend a moment saying something. <laughs> I see no, that I smile. Just, I was just laughing at Farmer Carl. I, I imagine Farmer that Carl. everybody was called Farmer at the conference. Uh, yeah, no, no. They, <laughs> uh, they wore suits and stuff. It wasn't just all Farmer over Dave. Off. <laughs> um, Farmer Dave. So, uh, so, yeah, so this guy uh, is from South Carolina, and um, he just started doing things completely different on his farm. And he did his entire, it wasn't just one field, he completely turned over his entire farm to this new set of uh, principles and had an extremely successful year. Uh, for starters, no tillage whatsoever. Absolutely no tilling of the soil. So you know how you go see the uh, tilling and turning over and all that kind of stuff? Never turn the soil over again. Second thing, no fertilizers or pesticides. The third thing is uh, um, growing, he, he showed me his grain, uh, a picture of the grain, or the seed that he's, and it was four different materials. So that in addition to the crop that he wanted to grow, <laughs> grow I'm sorry, in advance, um, he, there are three other cover plants so that the entire thing, there aren't big rows and lots of dirt showing, the entire field is covered in plants. The other three of which are dedicated solely to drawing uh, through photosynthesis, uh, CO2 out of the atmosphere and feeding the microbes in the soil. The whole thing is about developing an, a really healthy microbial environment in the soil. And guess what? The chemical fertilizers kill the microbes. It puts chemicals in there, but it kills the microbes. He didn't have earthworms. Nobody has earthworms in their fields. And this year he said, my, my fields were just swarming with earthworms, which mm. is a good sign, not a bad sign. And. Uh, um, the idea is that, and who knew, I learned a lot, uh, that the plants through photosynthesis create sugars, which almost all of the plant activity goes, goes to the roots. We always think of things coming out of the roots and into the plant, but no, it's the other way around as well. The uh, photosynthetic uh, results, the products of photosynthesis go to the roots and feed the microbial colonies, which in turn, their predators uh, and their, wa their waste feeds the roots of the plants. Mm -hmm. So it's a complete ecosystem down there. So the whole idea is let's get a really healthy microbial system, never till it, that disrupts it, feed them like crazy with all these cover crops, um, and then at the end of the, of the season, you just flatten everything. So you get a, 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 like a layer, a, like a six inch layer of everything just rolled over. He didn't, he saved about $10,000 in pesticides, all of the labor and wear and tear and, and uh, gasoline to do tilling. He doesn't do tilling anymore. Um, and, uh, and he had a fantastic, well, he had a really, really good year. He said How that seeds planted? Um, he, his crops were corn, uh, um, soy, and uh, I think uh, corn, soy, and wheat, maybe. What acreage? He had 300 planted? acres. Hand planted mechanically? No, you said no, no gasoline. He had a no, no, no tilling. So he saved the gasoline on the tilling, which okay. normal farmers, well, not that he's abnormal, but other farmers. <laughs> uh, and, and I got to tell you, it was like, you know, um, uh, what's that movie, uh, you know, with Kevin Costner? The show's always about Kevin Costner. Uh, and um, Water World. <laughs> the, the one race, you know, everybody is like, what's wrong? What's wrong with Farmer Carl? He's doing something strange, you know. Dream, field of Dreams, exactly. Um, uh, he has done it now. This was just his second year. Um, his first year was last year. 
the break-even point uh, to for to make a profit was sixty-three dollars a bushel, and uh, and just because of his costs, when he employed these new mechanisms or methods, uh, his break-even cost is forty dollars a bushel, and the price uh, of the crops this year, and so all the farmers around him, was $43 a bushel. So everyone around him lost money, and he didn't make a lot, but he didn't lose, and he had a little tiny profit. So he said it was great. It's, everybody does well in a good year, but he said in the bad years, you know, that this, this is really a, um, a uh, tremendous thing to do. And I, did, I forgot to mention, of course, the other one that we here in California really care about is that it totally holds the water, because it bur burrows through uh, and creates channels for the water to stay and not run off. Yeah. How did you replace the nutrients of using using fertilizer? <coughs> the nutrients have to come from sulfites if you can remove The nutrients come from the organic matter, the, the microbial uh, community in the that are growing and and nurtured by the plant systems, by the roots, and their predators. And so there's a, a cycle, the predators and their waste feeds the plants. And and the point was, and I think this is a really good one. You know, plants were designed by nature to do this, to, to, to through photosynthesis, feed all, create all the sugars and feed them into the roots. So why would a plant do that? Not because they're, you know, such nice plants. They do it because the trade-off is, or the, the payback is, that the microbial community and the, um, and the ecosystem created by that microbial community feeds the plants. Was so a dry farmer? I don't no know irrigation, rain only. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know. It so I'm going to guess no because it was a lot less water. He talked about he had savings. You know, all the places on the bottom line that he had savings and water was definitely one of them. So it was a really remarkable story, and I thought it <coughs> bore sharing in in this environment. Um, it, well, that's also because that's what they wanted me to do. Is <laughs> why I went is because I'm trying to help them uh, get this word out. But it. Uh, it, it and he, the last thing I'll say is he, um, he was talking about this at a university, and uh, the students, well, how come everybody isn't doing this? And he gave a great analogy, which was, if someone told you, he said to the students, how many of you drive? They all raise their hand. If someone said to you, I know that when your car gets empty, you always go to the gas station and fill up, but this time, don't do it. Trust me, there's a secret stash, you know, and when you really go on empty, it'll kick in and you'll be fine. Uh, you know, how many of you would still stop at the ga last gas station for the next 100 miles? And of course, everyone would. The risk, it's your livelihood, it's your farm. You're not going to risk your family's, you know, food uh, to do something that's so, com that's, you know, completely opposite to everything they've been taught for the last 50 years, how their fathers did it, how their grandfathers, you know, the young son takes over the family farm, he's not going to start risking it all. So it's a really interesting message. Um, and the, the tie in, of course, I mentioned earlier about the, all the sequestration of carbon dioxide because you're, you're filling the field with plants. And so you're also able to take all that carbon, turn it into sugars, and feed the microbes. So it's good for, uh, for that as well. Um, but uh, um, oh, also just the food, of course. The, food production issues that are raised as a result of climate change one, and, and even without, just because of the population increase, what we uh, are facing with being able to feed the planet. So these are uh, very important um, uh, considerations, I think. There was a guy from the UN who was speaking, and he made the comment that nobody at COP21 in Paris is even talking about food supply or agriculture as a, as a piece of the puzzle, which was a disappointment to him. So I've done, uh, I've done my part here to at least tell you this. I, I was utterly fascinated by it, and I hope you find it at least a little interesting. Yeah, well, well, I think it's, it's extremely interesting in that people are talking about trying to set up colonies on other planets, on the moon, other places. So of course, the Martian, he's yeah. shown growing yeah. his potatoes and whatnot. But the answer is, you need a vast microbial system to support that. You need yeah. the topsoil. It's not as simple as they made it seem in the movie. Um, but it sounds like we're starting to unlock some of this, yeah. which and I Dr. think is exciting. Dr. Dan was able to explain to them the uh, hopefulness of that wormhole that appeared near Saturn. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly right. <laughs> Actually, I did, because I did mention the Martian, and of course, how he managed to make that soil organic. Uh, but also interstellar, of course, it, this whole story is driven by the fact that the soil has failed and the, and the crops have failed, and so they need to go elsewhere. So, so I did actually mention yeah. the two blockbuster films of last year, and if, if those billions from the sales of those movies could just help a few farmers, maybe that would be a, a good outcome.